In this video, we will have a look at how to make your workflow active. So right now we are starting with a blank slate. We have an empty workflow. We are going to create a basic webhook and response so that we can make it active and see how it looks. We start by creating the initial webhook. So this receives a query from a URL and we can copy that test URL and we can post it up in the browser to see that currently the requested webhook is not registered is the message that it's telling us up the top. So now what we can do is create a response, uh, respond to webhook, and that's going to allow us to respond to the message and it responds to the request that comes in. We need to update this first webhook to say we want to use the respond to webhook node. We change this to production. So at the moment it's in a test state. That means it can't be hit externally. And now we want to put it into a production state. And that gives us a slightly different URL. If we save that, we still have not yet activated our workflow. We can tell this because it says up the top here that it's in an inactive state. And that means if we try to use the production URL, we are still getting the message, the requested webhook is not registered. So the last action now is to activate our workflow in the top right hand corner next to the share button. We press this and slide it across and it becomes active and it's green. You can see that it pops up two messages to check when you put something into an active state because it's now effectively in a production state. So it suggests or recommends that you set up error notifications and track time saved. So if now if we call that URL using the previous uh, call or query, we will get a valid response. Now there's a lot of information here, but what it's telling us is we've got a response with headers and telling us what browser is being used. This is a valid response to our query. So we have now put our workflow into an active state. If we want to reverse that and we want it to be inactive again, we simply press the green button and turn it back into an inactive state. And that will mean we get the same message that the webhook is not registered.